So you guys probably have lots of practice. Yeah. All righty. So this workshop is called Preparing the Course in Blackboard, Copying and Exporting. Um, I don't know if you knew that this was possible, but um, there are two different ways to copy. Um, you have a panel in your left side navigation and uh, in packages and utilities, that's where you can, um, you have a copy course and export archive course. So, um, I don't know how you think of your course working, but I would like to, you, for you to picture it like this. So this is a, the first telephone tower in Sweden. And there were 5,500 telephones in Sweden and every single one had a wire that went from the phone company to the phone. And this is how they did it. This picture uh, to me symbolizes how complex the backside of your, uh, <clears throat> your Blackboard course is. There are every time, every piece of content you put in is like one of these wires. Um, it goes down the street. Um, if you delete it, it goes away. Um, there, the, when you copy your course, the best way to do it is to pick up this entire phone tower and put it in another course. So the, the two ways of copying, there's copy course and it is quick and customizable with some caveats. There's also export archive course. It's the most stable way to copy a course with some caveats. So that is the extent of my PowerPoint. I want to jump right in to Blackboard. So when your uh, course is loaded for the new semester, it looks like this. This is our template. Uh, it was customized by um, instructional design staff here at Incarnate Word. And it is just bedazzled with all of these uh, links in your navigation on the left side. Um, most of them are empty. Some of them have content in them. Um, a couple of these links do have stuff in them. Uh, for instance, start here has content in it. So does syllabus and online, I mean syllabus and outline. Um, down here, your Zoom link has content in it. So that means when you copy a course, when you pick up that whole telephone tower worth of uh, uh, wires and drop it into another course, it's going to put this same content into that course. And so you'll have double, uh, double copies of everything. So to avoid that, we have all created this handout. And uh, it's got all the steps. It's very simple. Um, the first thing you do is go to your blank course. So in your case, it would be your fall course, which is going to be blank like this. Um, Dr. Peigler has graciously allowed me to copy one of his courses. So according to our um, tutorial right here, the first thing you actually do is go to your destination course. That means the course that all your content is going to be put into. And the reason you do that is because you have to delete all these links um, that have content in them because so to avoid getting that, um, that double sets of everything. Um, something like this, your units and weeks assignments, they, they won't have anything in them. So you're not going to duplicate anything. 
So uh, just delete the link. So the instructions, locate your units, weeks, and modules, delete it. And Blackboard asks you to delete something at least twice, usually three times. And you, whenever you do anything, you should get a pink banner across the top that's telling you if you were successful. If you don't see it, then uh, it probably it didn't happen. So I'm just deleting all of these links. Tomorrow's workshop, we're actually going to go into these links and um, the ones that have content and go over why they have content and why you should pay some attention to them. And tackle some Okay, so I've deleted all these, all these links that had stuff in them. So now, according to our tutorial, I've done this step and I'm ready to go to the source course and I'm going to um, start my copy. This is my source course in biology. So um, down here in packages and utilities, this is where we have course copy. So you click and open that and you have to tell it where you're gonna send the copies to. So when you click browse, it's going to have every course that you've ever taught in this list. So you can, um, you can sort them by the date they were created. So probably the newest one will be uh, on top. So I want to, my destination course to be this course called there. It's on top. So this is where it's going. I'm a big believer in select all. That means you're moving that whole phone tower. You'll be tempted to deselect some of these things. But because the back end of Blackboard is so complicated, um, when you deselect something, it may disconnect a link or um, especially the grade book. Um, if you don't leave it selected. And there are things that are connected to your grade book. And once you do this the first time, it's, al it's almost impossible to go back and fix it. So if you forget, if you're just clicking these boxes one by one, um, it's easy to forget something that you needed. So um, Terry is a big believer in picking and choosing. But I've, I've had many calls from people that forgot something or something didn't work the way it did in their old course. So select all, that's my recommendation. There's also a choice here in file attachments. The default is to copy links and copies of the content. There's also another choice called copy links and copies of the content, but include the entire course home folder. Um, that just makes your, your uh, course larger. But if you do wanna know how big your course is, you can click on, on the course size and it'll tell you. Um, the default course size for a Blackboard course is two gigs. It used to be unlimited, but there Blackboard is trying to stick us for uh, all the storage that we're taking up because some people have uh, courses that are way past 15 gigs. One of them is 64 gigs, if you can even imagine how that happened. Um, include enrollments in the copy. You'll never need to do that. What that would do is just bring over your students from last semester uh, into this course, and there's no reason to do that. So I'm going to submit success. The course copy action is queued. Um, doing course copy only takes a couple of minutes. 
Um, and you'll get an email when it's done. Also, in case you didn't notice up here in this, uh, at the top of your navigation, there's this little circle here. That's the refresh for, for your, your course. So which one did I use? Blank. Yeah, see, here's my, <gasps> did anyone notice which, oh, it's the bear course, Never mind. Here it is. So there's also this banner. It'll tell you, uh, Blackboard will keep you posted when it starts the process. This blue banner will tell you when, that it's running and it'll tell you when it's complete. There's also a detailed log. If you're interested in that, that takes you to the logs page. And this is the course copy I just did. And it's telling me that I had no fatal errors and no errors of any kind. So that's always good. Usually there's one or two um, if a, a link breaks or something's missing for some reason. So now I have a, a, um, a complete copy of that biology course. And since I selected all, I can be sure that everything's working. Um, Let's see. So um, because I selected all, um, remember all those links that I deleted because they have duplicates? Well, I have duplicates. Harry, what happened? Yes, ma'am. I deleted start here and it's got duplicates. And so does uh oh, you know what I did? I deleted everything in this course that's named blank. Well, I meant to do that because this is a way to show you what happens when you don't delete that. So in this case, since there are duplicates, now I have to de go delete all of the duplicates. I have to go delete two, three duplicates in here. Um, in syllabus and outline, there's more. Um, in um, faculty resources and templates, now there's two of everything in there. So it takes much more time to delete duplicates when you um, when you uh, don't delete the the link in your navigation. So I hear I just had five things to delete. Now I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I have to delete if I want to clean up this course. So that's what you call a teachable moment. <laughs> <laughs> so does anyone have any questions about um, this, um, about um, cor uh, copy, course copy? You have to be an instructor to be able to um, copy. Um, I, ha I do have requests where some people want to lend uh, modules or something to another instructor and I can go ahead and add them as an instructor in somebody's course just so that they can make those copies. Um, anything? That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Hey, Della, this yeah. is Addie. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. I have a question. So I, I you had deleted the um, stuff in the new course, and I know that, so the things I can start here and the things that's, that you, um, your department already preloads, are they constant every year? Do they change? So if you were to change something for 2021, does it go back and change the old courses? No, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. So if, if I delete the new stuff and then I copy over the old stuff, then I've got old stuff copied over. Right. So for instance, uh, like a lot of people change this units and modules to just modules or just weeks. Mm -hmm. so you need, um, when you import it, 
it's going to keep this and it's then it's going to have your modules link also okay so if it's not exactly um it'll copy things um into a link with exactly the same name okay so do we at least want to keep the new start here and not delete that new start here because you all might have no actually it's important uh because most of those are linked to the website and the website okay. is always updated so okay. um so i think our old template had documents in it and those got went out of date okay. but, um, so the right terry so these will yeah and Andy, just fyi the this there's not going to be a change in this template okay. ever so it's the because same as last we're year. going because at the end of the spring semester that's when we're going to go to be going to uh to canvas so okay it's nothing okay. to worry about okay cool thank you Thank you. Hello. So just to follow up from Addie's question, if you want it to be safe and keep one of the file or folders there from your destination course, you can just rename it and it will copy a separate line. Right. So if if uh, you're, you know, it's like, say you added a module, we're, we'll go over that tomorrow. Um, since there's not, nothing with a similar name, it's going to keep everything that's here and then add add whatever name you have. Also, you're not actually taking anything out of that uh, older course. You're just making copies. So, um, you know, you can refer back to it forever. Any more questions? All righty. So, wow, that went pretty fast. Um, so our second, the second way to copy is the way that I always copy. And I, I copy courses all the time. And this is how I learned, and I think it's still the best way. So I am going to get rid of, so this uh, course, I mean, this, this way is, I, it's more stable because what you're doing is you're creating a zip file. And this is the export archive course, and then you have to import it. So we go back to utility, uh, packages and utilities, and uh, we're, we need to be in our source course, our old course, and we, do, we want to export it. I've already exported it once. But in this, ex in this export package, when you click that button, you have, uh, it's a very similar uh, choices. By default, it's only going to copy links, the file stored outside the directory, and copy everything that's in the, in the default directory. I'm just going to check and see how much, what the difference is. So with the defaults, this course is um, a little over seven uh, megs. If I choose to copy things that are outside of the default directory, um, it stays the same size. So clearly there was nothing outside of the, the course default directory. Um, I usually check that just in case, <clears throat> but you don't have to. Same thing here, I select all just to avoid any breaks, even if you don't use these things. Um, uh, it's always easier to delete something than to try to restore it from where it used to be. So this is export course. Sorry, did someone say something? Um, once you submit, it's going to it tells me the action has been queued. Usually this takes a little bit more time than copying because it's actually uh, compressing uh, all your, your content into a zip folder. And the great thing about uh, zip files is um, they always travel with a directory that lists everything that's in there what to do with it and where it goes. 
So that's why I think it's more stable than um, just passing between um, one course and the other. You know, to me, that's more like a, uh, it's in a plastic envelope with the address written in Sharpie. So even if there's rain or snow, nothing's going to happen inside, uh, inside that envelope. So that's the way I always do it. Not that you have to do it the way I do it. <clears throat> so here's my zip file. And um, I did one earlier today. Um, and so these are going to stay in the course uh, from now on unless I, I delete them. So um, maybe in a week, if I have to go through this process again, I can still go and download the zip file. So I have my zip file. I'm going to go to another blank course. And this is the one that I had deleted the right links out of. So to import that zip file back in packages and utilities, import the package. And I just have to browse my computer for where that um, um, zip file was downloaded to. Oh, and another thing, very important. Lots of, most people forget this. Um, when, um, when you export something, no, oh, I'm in the wrong. When you export something, it's not actually literally exported until you click the link. This is just a link to the place in Blackboard where this zip file is. You have to click it and then it's going to save to your download folder. Adela, it doesn't usually go automatically to the download folder? No, it doesn't. And um, uh, But other files do that, right? Yeah, it's just a Blackboard thing because um, when the whole, but I mean, other files in Blackboard go to the zip file. Well, that's another thing. I'm using um, Chrome, and it, this is just how it downloads files. You know? All right. Okay. But uh, usually, everything goes to to your should go to your download folder. Okay. You have to click on that it to download otherwise it's not going to go anywhere so I'm ready to import the package click on the import package button browse my computer and that package is in my course copy files and it's this uh, biology 4450 so I have just select that one. It loads it up and make sure you select all or else it'll, it won't download anything if you don't tell it what to, what to select. So, and you can see once you click submit, you can see down here, it's going to tell you what percent it's at uh, loading wise. So now it's telling me it's waiting, it's running. Okay, it's complete. So this is my course. It's called blank blank. And it's fully loaded with everything from that biology course. So you'll notice here that it did not put those links back because um, if you've ever used um, um, Blackboard, when you, when you uh, create something, it always goes to the bottom of the list. So So see, I have a orientation up here. 
and also have orientation down here. So all I have to do is mouse over these links and grab them and put them where they go. So um, that's all there is to that. Um, oh, and then just go delete like these extra, you know, extra bits. So do you have any questions? Do you, do you feel confident copying between? Adela, we have a question about copying tests from other courses. Oh, okay. Um. So uh, when you, uh, under course copy, um, test surveys and pools are, when you select all test surveys and pools are included. And um, as you know, tests and um, assignments are uh, connected to the, the grade center. So that's why you, uh, they're not going to copy, um, or the assignments won't copy if, if you don't copy your grade center also. So, um, yeah, tests do, tests, all your tests will copy. Also, all your rubrics, um, discussions, everything, everything will copy. The only boxes that are unchecked are availability and that really does depend on what term you're in and also um, whether you have guests or observers. Uh, Adela, and the question was um, copying tests from other courses? From uh, other, yes. Okay. Okay. So, you know, when you, when you, uh, you don't have to copy into the course of the same name. Remember up here when you're in, um, so let's say you want to just put your test in any other course. Just select it as the destination course and uh, uh, tests. So just select tests. And once you submit, all those, those test surveys and pools will go over to whatever course you want to send them to. And then, so they'll be in your tests and you can deploy them. Then a second question, will folders and content that are, that are hidden from students copy and export over? Um, yes, because even though they're hidden, they're still going to show up in this list. So the only way to, if you uh, select all of the content areas, the only way to not select all the all of the content is if you deleted the link to it. Otherwise, um, you know this is this is all your business. It it doesn't depend on whether or not it the students can see it. Anything else? Um, I had just one more thing to say about. Um, Announcements. I've noticed that lots of people uh, copy their announcements from semester to semester. And um, I've taken an online course where the they were using old announcements and the old date was on them. And that hurt my feelings. Because <laughs> I felt like they were just recycling some random course and you know it didn't matter mm -hmm. what they were saying or not. Um, I just wanted to point out, since we have plenty of time left, that in your um, course tools, there is a tool called date management. And what that does is it will give you um, all the dates in your course. It will make a list of them. And you can adjust the dates to your assignments. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, if you had a, uh, you, 
you know, literally you can adjust, if you know when all those assignments are due, you can adjust everything all at one time. Um, so here are all my dates. Um, and it tells you uh, the name of the, the item and also uh, where you can find it. So if you wanted to recycle like your welcome message, you can uh, you just find it and then click on the little edit pencil and you can um, change it to the date that your, that your new course starts. And you can do that um, if there were any assignments or tests in here, you could also, um, you could also do uh, change the dates on those. Adela, I have a question. I, it's, it's sort of related. I'm not, I'm not sure how close my question is to the topic today, but uh, there's such a thing on Blackboard that when you have two uh, sections exactly the same that you can merge yes. and that way do one announcement or set up one test. Um, that ha are you familiar with that? Does anyone at UIW do I, that? Merge? I do that all, all the time. Usually the first two weeks of us or week before and the first week of the semester, I'm getting all kinds of requests to do that. It's real easy. Lots of people do it. Good. Great. I'll do it. Okay. Actually, uh, Tim, actually Adela yeah. does that for you. So just email Adela and she'll take care of it. Well, I was going to bother you. <laughs> Oh, oh, Adela's the blackboard. She's the blackboard administrator. I am. I am. I am just a flunky at this point. <laughs> Great. I'll I do just it. email Adela, and she can take care of it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Adela, can you show us how you go to that date management again? Yes, it's here in Course Tools. Okay. And it's date management. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh, uh, do I just talk fast, or was this a really short? short? Don't worry about it. It was perfect. 